What's up everyone? Welcome back to another Comically Boston. Today is episode 47. It is Monday, March 27th, 2023. I'll be frank with you. I'm recording this on Sunday. I've had a busy week. I uh, got a lot done, saw a lot of things, did a lot of things. I saw Creed 3 Friday night. I saw John Wick 4 this morning. I'm going to talk about Creed in this episode. I'm not going to talk about John Wick. I'll give you a, a brief little uh, spoiler-free um, review-ish, uh, just kind of first reactions of it. But I'm going to do another video talking about the John Wicks 1, 2, 3, 4, the kill count, everything in the next video. Stay tuned for that. But, as you guys know, I like to start with the sports. We'll talk our Celtics. For a brief moment, I would like to acknowledge that I have surpassed 300 subscribers. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed, and uh, shout out to every one of y'all. I am three-tenths the way um, to being almost able to make some money off this shit. So I thank you guys very much, every single one of you that has subscribed, and uh, if you haven't, smash that that like button, smash that subscribe button for me, smash that bell, don't miss future videos, y'all. But we're going to jump right into it, Celtics. First, the Pacers, Friday night, they beat them up, 120-95. I, I, like I just said, I went to see Creed Friday night, me and my madre, got some B-dubs, saw fucking Creed, it was a good night. Um... So they beat him up by 35. JT had 34. JB had 27. Derek White had 22. Rob Williams had eight rebounds, three steals, three blocks. That's just like what you like to see, y'all. And it, it just was a good performance all around. The Celtics, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown combined together. They had 61, 14 rebounds. They shot 23 for 47 from field goal, 9 for 12 from free throws. And that's combining JT and JB. JB after the game was praising Rob. Rob had some great things that he was doing, and uh, he was saying that it all. It, Rob's the key, you know, and I believe that Rob is the key. The more and more Rob Williams plays, gets back to where he's jumping high, blocking shots, getting steals, being active on defense. He's a crucial part to this team. And um, the other day, I saw Gilbert Arenas talking shit about the Celtics. He has no no right to talk about a team that plays as well as that Celtics team, regardless of who the roster is. I get it. We don't have. Steph Curry, but we have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, and they are two of the biggest studs in the league. It, 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 But he was right in the sense that it shouldn't work, but it does. So it makes sense <laughs> if you watch. But if you ain't watching, that's why you think the Celtics suck. But players like Derek White, he was putting heat on Derek White's name. And I love this girl, Taylor. She posts little stats like this all the time, and I'm always like, ah. Love seeing Celtics fans on Twitter doing their thing. But she writes, Derek White just became the first player in NBA history to make at least five three-point field goals, hand out nine assists, and commit one or fewer turnovers in consecutive games. He, his last two games combined, he's had 42 points, 21 assists. He shot 10 for 19 from three, and he had one turnover in two games. That's very, very good for a player like Derek White. He's a fucking stud. Shout out to you, Derek White. The Celtics, Jason Tatum is the first overall now in Celtics 30-point games in a season. He has 40. He passed Larry Bird. He had 39. Havlicek had 38. Bird had 37. That must be a diff another season. He had thir 37 30-point games. Wow. Um, Paul Pierce had 33. Tatum, man. And he's only, like, 25 years old. Like, Tatum is a stud. Like, I don't care what you say. The Celtics... On Sunday night, we'll face the Spurs, so I'll get you the result in the next video. I know it's Monday now, but I'll be watching the Celtics in a couple hours when I'm making this video now. Uh, and then we got Washington on Tuesday night. We face Bradley Beal. We know Tatum and Beal are boys, so that should be interesting. Jumping into some news from this week, some more headlines, some Marvel news, some leaked pictures keep coming out. This is Danny Ramirez and Anthony Mackey. In these leaked pictures of Captain America 4 walking out of what could be a bakery of some sorts or some type of restaurant. They're in two street clothes outfits and Danny Ramirez's Falcon is on set. So he should be becoming Falcon in this new movie. That should be awesome to see. More Marvel news. Breaking Mar from Marvel Source. Tom Holland has revealed that he returns to play as... Peter Parker, Spider-Man, in Marvel Studios and Sony's Spider-Man 4, which I think has been confirmed to be in the works. So, that's awesome. And I also saw a video, if you've watched a couple weeks' video, um, I think he's going to be in Daredevil Born Again as well. 
And speaking about Daredevil Born Again, more stuff comes out. Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin. He is caught <laughs> pictures leaking of him holding a Fisk foam finger and uh, a black dude with a purple top hat behind him. So that, that's an interesting little top hat, sir. But I think he, Mr. Fisk here is going to be running for mayor of New York or uh, mayor of uh, Hell's Kitchen in Daredevil Born Again. So that should be interesting. But interesting note to, to note, he just got shot in the face and is supposed to be blind in Echo. Um, but he ha seems to just have his face here in that picture. So what's the deal with that? Comment below. I don't know. You tell me. Deadpool 3 leaks that Mobius, M. Mobius, Owen Wilson, and Miss Minutes will be in Deadpool 3. Deadpool being a menace like always. Isn't that, isn't that going to be something? And leaked that it's gonna, the movie's kind of going to be... Um, f from Deadpool 2, where he goes back in time and fucks with t time from Cable's time jumping thing, whatever it was, it was like a little circle. From that, he's going to jump back in time to save Wolverine, that's how Wolverine's going to be in it. So it's going to be Wolverine, Deadpool, and then he's going to be, they're going to be getting chased down by Mobius, in, I guess, trying to wipe their timeline, that's, I guess, going to be the movie. Um, but if so, that sounds pretty cool to me. On the other side of things, some DC news. Some pictures leaked of Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. She looks pretty cool. I love the red jacket. You know, the makeup doesn't do me very much. The blonde hair, she kind of just looks like Lady Gaga, to be honest. She doesn't look like, you know, not to say that uh, Margot Robbie doesn't look like Mar Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, but when you see Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, you're like, oh, that's it. Like, just perfect. That crazy broad is Harley Quinn, for sure. Um, but maybe it's just the pink and blue in the hair and just how she acts. Where, you know, I'm just, these are just pictures of Miss Lady Gaga here. But, you know, still, just how, like, she's holding up her fist to the crowd and she's supposed to be, like, getting quartered away by the cops. It doesn't give very Harley Quinn vibes. But it's also Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. So she can be whatever she wants to be. I think that movie's probably going to be badass. Moving on, some more news from around the world. Mr. Daniel Radcliffe, a.k.a. Harry fucking Potter. He just confirmed that he is expecting his first child with girlfriend Aaron Drake. How about that? Congratulations, Daniel. Let's move on. We'll talk about some movies I've seen. I saw Creed 3 this weekend. Let's... Might as well talk about um, the news that Jonathan Majors was arrested in New York yesterday. Uh, when I'm filming this, he was it was Saturday, so um, Sunday, now Monday. So hopefully more news is out by the next time I, c I can talk to you. As you guys know from previous videos, I've been advocating for Jonathan Majors. I think he's a great, great fucking actor. And every report that I've seen has just said these same things. Jonathan Majors was reportedly arrested this weekend on charges of strangulation, assault, and harassment. His rep claims, and his team claims, he's done nothing wrong. We look forward to clearing his name and clearing this up. I mean, that's the right response from your team, but I think we need a little bit more information. What the fuck happened? Who's this bitch? I didn't even know Jonathan Majors had a girlfriend. It's a reported girlfriend. So maybe it's just a crazy... A uh, girl that's like, I'm his girlfriend. And he's like, ah, I'm not your girlfriend. She's like, you know, maybe she's just saying wild stuff to try and get this boy in trouble. And the cops arrested him because he's black. You know, like it could be that. It really could be. Um, I'm not going to speculate and, and judge this man. I was I was debating whether or not to even cover it. But I did see Creed 3. And, um, you know, I'll give you more news on Jonathan's arrest allegations and what happens with that in, in a future date. Also, you know, you can think of Kang the Conqueror and Kang Dynasty and Marvel has much invested in this guy in the future of Marvel and him being the main foil for the next couple of years. It, it, it might be a huge deal, this arrest. So, I don't know, man. I think Jonathan Majors seems like a cool guy and I don't think, I, I really hope that he didn't do nothing wrong and he does get his name cleared up, but 
till then, until we know further, I'm not going to speculate on if he's guilty or not. You know, that's just I need to, I need more information. I'm not just going to blame. I'm not just going to say the guy's guilty or that he dis, this this accusations disgust me because we don't know any information. All we know is that he got arrested. So not good for the image, though. Um, not good for the brand, if you will. But I did see Creed 3. I think it was good. I do think it's the weakest of the three Creed movies. I think it was shot pretty good. You know, like as far as Michael B. Jordan directing, there's some. I can see what he's trying to do with the anime stuff and, you know, like the, some of the slow motion stuff. And, um, you know, some of it looked great. Some of it looked eh. But overall. It's a good movie, and it, it definitely feels like an end of a three-movie arc, and I think there's not going to be any more Creeds. I hope not. I really hope there's not a fourth Creed. I think this was it, and that was a good third one. And walk on out the door. Um, as far as Jonathan Majors goes for that movie, I think he did good playing a villain again. Um, he played it very douchey, but he's also supposed to be fresh out of prison, so very douchey. Um, but, you know, he, he got done dirty by his boy, and then they make up by the end, but he had to win the fight, but he had to lose the fight. I don't know. I think Jonathan Mage is still a good actor, so I really hope, <laughs> I really hope everything works out for him. Um, and, and it doesn't come back negatively. Uh, some other movies come, came out this week. Knock at the Cabin came out on Peacock. That's the M. Night Shyamalan movie starring Dave Bautista. And uh, I think that movie was fucking great too. Um, not that scary and pretty just like kind of trippy and like kind of just a good story where you're like, oh, who's telling the truth? Are they telling the truth? Are they telling the truth? Are they both telling the truth? But what do you believe? You know, like it, it's just a it, it's a nice brain starter of a show, you know, like or a movie. Um, moving on to a show of the week, uh, Power Ghost. Episode 2, Need versus Greed, um, was an interesting one. Braden and, and, and uh, Tariq, you know, doing their thing, uh, trying to move Noma's product. And Braden's getting lucky at the office, fucking around with that, that new girl at the office. I like that. Um, I don't like that Braden gave Bruchandria Carmichael, uh, Bruchandria, uh, a job for, with fucking Tate, he, she got the internship o over Tariq, but Tariq ended up getting the internship at the Weston's firm, which initially his father wasn't happy about, but I think Tariq will be happy about when he has some money in his pocket, and they're also going to run hella business and drugs out of that company, which could backfire on them, or could be fucking the key to them being successful, because that entire place is dirty, and it's Wall Street, and drugs, and partying, and cocaine, and strippers, and making money during the day, like, it's where cocaine gets done, is Wall Street. Like, if it gets done anywhere, it's Wall Street. <laughs> right? So, it might not be a bad move. But, they need to get rid of the gym, the dealer, the, which is the the guy that was works at the Weston's firm, but it's the dealer for the company, is the gym dude. So, you can't just necessarily go to him and make him buy your product, because that's going to be bad. You can't just sell over him, because that's going to cause friction. So they want to call in Kane to kill him. Uh, so Kane's not available because Kane's doing other shit. And Drew, the other brother, which isn't necessarily the one that's always the bad guy. He's the gay brother that's normally softer and not like Kane. But his boy just dumped him. So, so Drew walk, follows the gym guy and pushes him in front of a truck. And the guy gets hit by a truck. So... Jim guy's dead, they're, they're able to push business, but Kane does a job for Lorenzo trying to find out who Zeke's killer is, and Lorenzo is Zeke's killer, so he's sending him on a goose hunt, he thinks, he thinks Kane's not that smart, but Kane figures it out, and it's all from the the dude that showed up to, he like jumped um, Drew, which, it was all fucked up, because Lorenzo hired the guy to jump Drew, and the only way Kane knew was because you know, like, nobody would have known, like, and so Lorenzo hired him and gave him Zeke's ring, which is in that box that only Kane knew about, oh, which they showed the box at, like, the beginning of the episode, you're like, why is that box important, so Kane's a smart motherfucker, and now Kane's like, I own Lorenzo, and he gives his father product and goes, 
yeah, you, you said you ain't moving shit, you're moving that shit. Get 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 it moving. So now Lorenzo's under Kane's thumb, which ain't good, especially a father son relationship. That sucks. And Kane's just a bad motherfucker, but whew, that's some shit, really. Um, you know, very eventful episode so far. Uh, and then, as far as John Wick opening weekend goes, John Wick starting with a cinema score of an A. You know, it's got great um, numbers on Rotten Tomatoes. John Wick 4 earns $29.4 in films domestic opening day, the highest opening for the series, which is impressive. You know, your fourth movie normally isn't your highest grossing, but 1, 2, 3 was pretty nice building, building, building blocks of John Wick. And frankly, I think the first three movies are great watches to watch at home and just do your thing and just collect yourself and, you know, watch it at your pace because there is a lot of violence, you know, like... If you're not, you know, and into the violence, you know, you can be like, okay, there's just too much of this. But uh, there's a story with the violence, too. It's not just violence for the sake of violence at times. There might be some of that. But overall, you know, it's them like, you know, they're trying to do something with the violence. You know, they're trying to get somewhere. They're not just like, oh, look at people. Phew, let me kill them. Like, the people are attacking him, so he has to kill them so he doesn't die. You know, like, there's certain uh, reasons for his his shit you know like he's not just killing people but donnie yen in the fourth one is fucking killing it and throughout the first opening weekend worldwide john wick has made 137.5 million dollars and so now really nobody's going to see Sazam. so i feel terrible for Sazam too they made like two million dollars this weekend which Terrible. I really hope some people go and see Shazam. I really should. I saw two movies this week. Neither of them Shazam. So, uh, but now I have less movies on my list. But I still got to see Cocaine Bear. I still got to see Shazam. Um, so I'm, I'll get those done eventually. Go check out John Wick 4 if you haven't seen it already. I genuinely liked it. And Donnie Yen is great in it. And if you guys don't know who Donnie Yen is, he's a fucking beast of a stunt uh, actor, if you would. Uh, him, Jackie Chan, those type of films. I don't know if you guys are into them, but check them out because some great action there. And I only <laughs> am into those things because of the Corridor Digital guys. So follow them on YouTube if you, ha you don't because they're awesome too. But this is it for me. I'm Big Cam. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, hit the bell if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next video. We'll be talking John Wick 1, 2, 3, and 4. Kill count, total kills, how many people did he kill, what happens, and I'll explain it all. And we'll be talking full John Wick next video. So I'll see you guys when I see you guys. Peace.